Well, Jordan, we'll go ahead and roll right into it. So thank you for joining us for the Unlearned Show, where it's Breaking Bad Habits with a Purpose. Um, today's guest is Jordan Carroll, where just a couple of things about um, Jordan. 15 times you've moved in about 10 years. Uh, you're originally from San Francisco, if I'm not mistaken. And your, your big question is, how can I? And it's amazing because when you look at the things that you're accomplishing and what you're doing, this is the part that, that just blew my mind. On your website, you have two quotes from two absolutely different people on the surface, Jim Carrey and Abraham Lincoln. Um, so, uh -huh. so if you could introduce yourself, but start there. I mean, tell us a little bit about why, why and how you decided to do that. And then we'll roll right into the host asking you some questions. So welcome. Okay. To <laughs> um, just to, to handle the quote question first, um, you can take inspiration from anyone, right? And I think there's a huge part of my life that's been influenced by comedy, that's been influenced by history. And when I come across quotes, no matter who they're from, I have an ongoing list in my iPhone that I just copy and paste and add them in there. Uh, or if I hear a good one, I'll add them in there. And then those go directly into the site. So it doesn't matter who it's from, you know, people, you could take inspiration from anyone and everybody knows something that you don't know. Um, as far as like me and, and who I am, uh, I just first wanted to thank all of you. Uh, I I've looked at the people that are on this show and it's quite an honor. I'm very humbled to be one of them. So start with that. So thank all of you. Um, and for me, like, am I about me, I guess? I've always viewed this as a very fundamentally difficult question because I'm constantly evolving and changing. And I believe the answer to that is I'm the person who sits in the consciousness that watches everything. But if I tell you what I've been watching, it's like I watch this person who uh, is obsessed with growth, who's obs obsessed with uncertainty in my life. Um, I have a, like a, a, a deep need for that. Uh, I'm a huge giver. I give first. I prioritize relationships and serving others. That's really my why and my purpose, I think, is to use my experiences, use my mistakes, use what I've learned in my life to help others uh, to really develop the reality that they want to see in their world. Because most of us don't think that we can have certain things uh, that can exist in front of us, but we can put those things into action. Uh, I'm really fascinated with psychology. I'm fascinated with human behavior, why we do things, and emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And contribution is really huge to me. I always want to be contributing to something that's bigger than me. Uh, and I really thrive off of being out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And if I could be doing anything for money, I would be an NBA player. But uh, there are some realities that are non-negotiable, one of those being my height. So that's my intro. <laughs> You can be whatever you want to be, Jordan. Whatever right. you want to be, I believe in you. There is um, a guy who's like five foot eight in the NBA, so I have no excuse, I guess. Because I'm taller than him. <laughs> you got this. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go because it's super loud. But um, so were you always like that? Or what was like, what kind of set you out on that journey? No, I was pretty shy when I was younger, actually. Uh, high school, I was kind of like a stoner. I was an outcast in a way, uh, I would say. Um, I mean, I had a lot of different friends, I, but the con it seemed like the common bond I had with anyone was that I smoked weed with them at one point. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of like how I was in high school. And I, was, uh, I went to college at Chico State in Northern California. Uh, it's a small mid-sized school, state school that not a ton of people know about. They've got a really good business program. I knew I wanted to be in sales, uh, marketing. That always came naturally to me. And I always, when I was younger, had a video camera in my hand. Um, but I, I wasn't like outgoing, really, and until college. And I realized, so this was kind of a shift for me. I, I was in the dorms and I was living in a nine, a nine-story dorm with you know, just it was a co-ed dorm. It was pretty crazy in, in some ways, but it really opened me up and brought me out of my shell. And I realized I can be who I want to be. Like none of these people know who I was in high school. So fundamentally, I can portray a different person. And then if you just do that long enough, you become that person. 
And that's also something that got me into trouble because I think in my collegiate life, I ended up becoming a person that I didn't want to be like now, for instance. Yeah. So, okay. I actually, cause we weren't filming when you did this, but I want you to show people where you are and tell people where you are. Cause I think that's so cool. Uh, that's just a, that's part a. Okay. Uh, so I just like lift up my computer or what do you saying? Yeah, that was cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I am in Prague right now. This is the co-working space in the garden. So we have, it's kind of like an old like embassy, I think, or, or it was an old government official's home. And they converted it into a co-working space that serves um, different either startups or programs. I'm on the remote year program right now. So we're traveling every month to different uh, countries in a group of about 45 of us. And they have like a whole private section for us here. And then they have the communal areas. So this is the communal area, like this is freaking awesome. Um, Unless, unless you have allergies like me, I got to like double up on my allergy meds and like it's pollinated as, as AF out here. So <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. I don't know how deep I can swear, but. Pretty much allowed to do it. <laughs> you can do what you want. We'll, we'll, we'll get it taken care of. <laughs> okay. Or we won't. Or we it won't. is going to change the rating. Maybe not. It's rated R. Yeah. Let's see oh. me. Okay, so I wanted to ask you, you were talking about, you know, part of your why is kind of taking your mistakes and things that you've learned mm -hmm. to help other people. Is there one like big thing that really seems to resonate with people that you could share? Um, Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I, and I think the easiest way to understand how you can help people is to just simply look at your past. Like, what have you overcome? Who can you relate to? And the closest person that I can relate to at this point are people that are either in college or just out of college, uh, and they don't feel like they have control over their life. Now, control can come in, in many different flavors, right? It's like, I don't have control over my career. Like, I, I am in a nine to five. I don't want to be. Uh, and I had lived that life in IBM. While it was a great experience going through a corporate entity and getting the training building the network, dealing with, you know, fortune 100 companies, you still sacrifice the ability to have control because there's all these corporate constraints around you um, being enforced. So for the people that I know that are really growth minded, um, they're millennials generally that are questioning the status quo of like, why go to college and just get this job and then just do that? they're thinking to themselves, there's more, there's like location independence, there's financial independence, there's uh, doing my own thing instead of working for someone else and building someone else's dream. Um, so I really want to speak to those people who already have that sense of like discomfort with where they're at, with their ability to control the things around them. Um, and, and another thing would be kind of their personal experiences and relationships. So uh, for me in particular, I had, you know, an alcohol abuse problem for sure. I was doing drugs pretty recreationally. Um, a lot of things that I wasn't proud of. I was uh, quite overweight. I, mean, I don't know, quite overweight, but um, I was about 200 pounds like two years ago. So I had kind of this mental, physical, spiritual transformation over the past couple of years that I think really speak to a lot of people that are in that zone right now where they're just out of college, just in college, they're still doing what their friends do instead of making their own decisions. Um, still a, a prime, um, they're, they're still very impacted by pressure too. And just like going along with the flow. And it's like, you kind of have to control your life before it gets out of control like that. And that was a rant. <laughs> no, that was fantastic. <laughs> So I have a question for you. Um, <clears throat> with your travels, mm -hmm. you're a traveler. You, so for me, I'm one of those people who's, like I planted my roots. I'm sure. here in the Midwest and I don't, I'm like afraid to, to mm -hmm. not travel like for pleasure, but 
or business, but for like a new, a new foundation, a new start. How did sure. you get started on all of those travels? And what do you suggest for somebody who wants to uh, pick up their roots maybe and move somewhere else and yeah. try it out? Um, well, well, for sure, nothing is like general across the board answer, but I, what I would say is ask yourself what your priority is because you do sacrifice things to be traveling like this. Um, one of the main things that I'm sacrificing right now is, um, you know, some relationships. Okay, let's, let's back this up. So when I make relationships, whether it's potential romantic interest or it's a friendship or whatever, I quickly know that that's going to become something digital instead of in person because you know that you're going to leave this place in a month or whatever it is. That person's on their way, you're on your way. So ask yourself really deeply, are there certain places you're willing to compromise in your life to make that the priority? Because if your priority is the relationships and being rooted and grounded somewhere, and Chantal, I think you have a, a kid, if I'm not mistaken, uh, as a son. Um, so for you, you know, that's definitely a different question than for me, because I, I don't have that. I don't have a kid. I have a family in California that I can go back and visit and will be visiting soon, but I don't have a girlfriend. I don't have a wife. I don't have a child to take care of. So the first question for yourself is, you know, what are you willing to struggle for? And, and a lot of people ask themselves kind of the other way around. It's like, what do they want? No, what are you willing to struggle for? Because there's different ways to, to struggle. And being in foreign countries every month, for instance, and like being on the road all the time presents me with new challenges every single time I wake up because I don't know my surroundings. I, I don't know, like you take for granted maybe like public transportation when you, when you know it and it's in your language, right? But like, I'm almost like deathly terrified to like try and get on a bus sometimes because I'm like, oh, this is going to go the wrong way. So I like take an Uber or I'll like walk an extra three miles. Uh, but um, yeah, I think asking yourself if that's really your priority. And then if you determine that that's your priority, for me, I'm very structured. I it made it easier to do a program like Remote Year because they take care of all the logistics. I pay them. I have an apartment in each place. I have a, a global online community on Slack that I can just tap into in any city. Um, I have a, a TV show, or a, you know, a, an online video show that I do a weekly series that gives me the confidence and the, the platform to reach out to people on LinkedIn in these different cities and start establishing relationships in the startup communities. So all of these things kind of contribute to really uh, alleviating some of that fear for me, but I've always ran towards that in this particular way. And I think I know myself deep enough as far as what I need. And one of those needs that's urgent right now is uncertainty and growth. And by doing this, I'm putting myself uh, in that position. So, so oh, go ahead, Chantal. You had some. I was just going to say, um, so would you say that your community that you've built has helped you through going through or getting outside of your comfort zone? That community is like what you, you mentioned Slack, you mentioned the community on LinkedIn, you mentioned all that. What does community mean to you with your lifestyle? Yeah, I think when I look at my life um there's a lot of different communities i i find myself at the center or near the center of many different social circles i have people that i knew from high school i have people that i knew from college i have people that i knew um from the different organizations i was a part of former co-workers people that i literally meet in these co-working spaces people that are on my remote year people that are in that slack so determining which one which communities provide what for me is important so i do have a mastermind group a couple different mastermind groups that i'm a part of and we're in uh you know text messages together and we talk every day so i think being able to convert a lot of relationships that you may have thought to be like they had to be close proximity to converting those to digital 
um, take advantage, you know, if you're going to be traveling, you have to learn how to take advantage of digital tools that will allow you to communicate with people. It's just really, you know, you can video anyone you want across the world with Wi-Fi. So again, it goes back to the priority, right? Do you prioritize being really, really close to someone physically or are you going to put in more effort into the relationship? And are you going to reach out via text? Are you going to really reach out and call them? You know, are you going to do the little things that you didn't have to do before because you live near them? Thank you. Sunny. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Jordan, you've talked a couple of times about growth being the most important thing for you. Of course, you talk about uncertainty and control and then the overarching theme for you is something that's bigger than you. Mm -hmm. So what does the future for you look like? Wow. <laughs> that's um, well, the future is every moment that comes next, right? So the future as of right now is tomorrow I'm running a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of my future um are you, are you speaking of a specific timeline no I, so i think in terms of because you talk about having to reflect you know looking back to the past mm -hmm. to kind of move forward and so i guess i probably yeah. should have said what does the future look like for you in terms of you know in the beginning you had um the drugs the alcohol the weight and you everything that you've mentioned you found specific ways to struggle and move past it mm -hmm. so what's something you know, current or something that as you're looking to your past that you have to unlearn to move you forward into the future. So like, what's something that's, that's big for you? Oh, so you want your unlearn question. I, I know all the questions you guys ask. Uh, uh, so what am I trying to unlearn? I can hit you with that. Um, there's two things. Okay. Multitasking. Fuck. I'm so bad at multitask. I mean, it's not even a real thing. Your brain actually does not multitask. You, you go between the two and you never really are fully giving 100% energy to either. So the tasks don't get done, um, especially when you start a business and you've got different requests from different people. You've got people that are reaching out from your content. You've got people that are reaching out to work with you. You've got just noise. Um, you know, being in a group of 45 people overseas, like, there's a lot of temptation and a lot of no's that I have to say, and that's just part of it. But I'm really trying to unlearn multitasking because I don't get shit done when I multitask. So uh, trying to institute like the one thing rule, um, Pomodoro technique, like trying to figure out what's going to work for me, setting my alarm for like 25 minutes, 30 minutes and saying, I'm not going to leave this one screen. I've got like the newsfeed eradicator on my Facebook. You know, it's like all these little things that just kind of have to be present or else I'm going to be in trouble. Um, and the second thing would be taking things personally. This mm -hmm. has been, has anybody read the four agreements? Mm -hmm. Katie. Okay. So my homework to everyone here is read the four agreements. It's like so <laughs> short. It's like 40 pages or something like that. Um, it's a be beautiful book, beautiful book. And one of the lessons in there is never take things personally. And I've always been a person who wears my emotions right on my sleeves. Like you can tell where I stand with you. If I'm a little upset, you'll probably know. Um, and I don't really hide it. It's just, it's there. So what happens is if someone does something that I don't particularly appreciate, um, I, in the past, I've really taken it personally and I take it as if they're doing it to me. Uh, instead, what I'm trying to practice is having empathy and reframing the situation. So to ask, why would a completely rational and sane person do that? Right. And if I can give them the benefit of the doubt that they didn't do it to hurt me, I don't want to live with that baggage. Right. And, and there's a really good quote. And this goes back to your asking me which quotes I like. This is a great quote. I'm pretty sure it's Dale Carnegie. Um, we judge ourselves based on our intention. We judge others based on their behavior. And so much of taking things personally is judging people based on their behavior and not their intentions. Yeah, that's an, that's an awesome quote. And definitely four agreements. Um, I can tell you that I'll, I'll make it a point to read on that, but I, I am going to direct you back to the future question now. Okay, sure. 
just as broad as it is. And as much as like when, so when I ask that question of what the future looks like, what's the mm -hmm. first thing that pops into your mind? Like what, what, cause, cause in my mind, the way that you're kind of carrying yourself and conveying yourself, that's gotta be a priority if it's the first thing yeah. that pops into your head. Yeah, absolutely. Um, initially what I would think of is abundance and just so much of what I've built in the past I'm seeing come to fruition now and I'm just continuing to build so that my future uh, is abundant. I, I looked into the future to having, you know, my own company that is completely uh, allowing me to be financially free and continue to travel. If I so choose, if I don't want to travel, then I can go and, and put roots somewhere. But I think the freedom aspect and the control aspect is something that I, I'm going to value about my future. Uh, I'd like to do more speaking. I, I've done plenty of speaking gigs, but be on a more uh, consistent basis with paid speaking opportunities. I'd really like to write a book. Um, you know, the future I think is is grand. I mean, it's helping people, right? It's helping as many people as I can and providing as, as much value as I can to uh, the universe and uh, one thing that I like to, to think about is like mindset wise, it's like, I'm, I'm on the universe's payroll, right? So the, if I put in work for the universe, I'm going to get paid. And I think that just constantly putting out good things into the world um, will bring all those things to me. That's awesome. Um, Jordan, I'm going to open it back up for all the co-hosts. If they had another question or something they wanted to ask you. And if, if not, then we'll flip it and the floor is all yours. So. Can you tell us about your company and um, kind of what all you're doing with that? Because I feel like you've kind of been alluding to it just a little bit. So mm -hmm. tell us more about it, please. Okay. Yeah. So my company and what's funny is I started off doing like freelancing and consulting on this trip about three months ago when I started this trip and I ended up like quitting a bunch of projects that I was doing and then focusing solely on my brand and what I'm doing now, it's called negotiable reality. And you know, the focus is really on growth for companies and growth for the individual. And uh, I specialize in sales and growth marketing strategies and execution for mostly small to mid-sized service-based companies. Um, and then in the, on the individual side, it was very much towards the people that I spoke about earlier, someone who is growth minded, who's already investing in themselves, um, but is kind of stuck in a place where they don't feel like they have control over, um, you know, their life. And, and usually in that millennial range, cor you know, corporate nine to five, because I can relate to that. Um, the priority for me right now is building out this four week uh, hands-on like live course that I'm going to be launching. It's going to be in either early, uh, late May or early June. So this, I, I imagine this episode would probably come out around then. Um, and it's really going to be helping to teach personalized systems of consistency for my target audience in their mind, their body, in their career. Uh, I had mentioned it a little bit, you know, before, but you know, I had um, a weight issue and I went from about 200 pounds, 26% body fat to 160, about 11% body fat in a matter of eight months. And like, that was huge for me. I basically transitioned all my work from being stuck in one place, from being a nine to five, cor you know, corporate guy to now traveling the world and, you know, being able to, to work with uh, my coaching and consulting company. So I feel like, you know, I negotiated my reality, right? Because our perception of reality is what our actual reality is um, because there's really, it's how do you actually define what real reality is? Um, and now we get all like philosophical and shit, but um, yeah, th those are the things that I'm working on right now in particular. I'd love to, um, you know, offer up the, the website and the links to you guys. Um, so you can have that once all of that is finished over the next couple of weeks, you know, I've really been on a sprint and I think Katie's been watching me and we've been watching each other on this, but um, it's really fun. And I know that I'm going to be able to impact a lot of people and I've gotten a lot of interest um, so far.
I don't have any questions, but like I'm just fascinated with your background noise because there's like birds chirping. <laughs> and, like, oh, is it, you can hear that? So peaceful. <laughs> that's that's funny. Yeah, it is kind of peaceful. I don't know what they're saying, but I don't either. But it has to be meaningful because that's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> So, so Jordan, we'd love to flip the script and allow you sure. free reign for the next five, 10 minutes, however long you'd like to continue chatting. Feel free to, it can be a general question. It can be something specific, but it's all yours. Okay. Uh, well, Sonny, I know that you, did you used to, did you grow up in Portland? Uh, so my, I did not, but my parents, <laughs> so my parents um, moved to Beaverton, Oregon. Mm. I think they've been there for about 10 years now. So I was actually deployed overseas. Uh, they were living in, I think, California at the time I came home and they weren't there. <laughs> so okay. they, they had moved in the middle of, uh, of my There you go. But they picked a beautiful area. The Northwest is awesome. Um, and I lived in Eugene, Oregon for about four or yeah. five years. So all of your, your fun stories definitely a special place for me too yeah um, yeah i had i mean the last place i lived in the u.s was oregon for three years so uh, i loved portland um from a general perspective when you're creating you're, you're producing content as a group i'm very curious to one know like what was the selection process for the co-hosts let's start there <laughs> great question um so uh, let me back up just a little bit, just so that you get kind of some history into it as well. So LinkedIn video, this entire group, we were all part of the, the beta group. And don't, mm -hmm. don't hold us on numbers because nobody knows, but let's just pretend there were 100 people that were selected by LinkedIn to be part of this beta LinkedIn video group in, let's just call it August or September, maybe July. And so most of us started posting let's just call one, like one per month or one per week. It was just very random and sporadic. And so after about a month or two, I was observing a lot uh, mm -hmm. and just watching what, what you know, people were putting out, what the content was, and just trying to get a sense for what the messaging was and kind of their values, like their intrinsic value of what they were sharing with complete strangers, right? So it's just sharing information with this wonderful new community. It's so brand new. Um, I mean, it's, if you asked me eight months ago, if I would have this kind of dynamic in this relationship with people that I may have never met and I may never meet, mm -hmm. which I hope we do, um, I would have been like, you're, you're nuts. Like you're crazy. It's not even yeah. possible. Right. So it, so that, that's the kind of the back, the back part of it. And so, um, I found five or six people that I really just loved what they were putting out there. And I thought that there was something that was there. And so I think I spoke with Jake first, or Jake reached out to me first about an article I had written. And, you know, I was bouncing around a few things and I said, hey, I'd love to do something like this. What do you think? And he's like, well, well, who else are we talking with? And so lo and behold, here's the rest of them. I think about November, we hopped onto a couple of calls, a couple of videos, and this, this show is a culmination of everybody's idea. So mm. that's, that's, the, that's the thing that's really important to remember is that, it was born from an idea, but each person has the ability to say, hey, what if we do this? Or what if we shape it like that? Because it's kind of an essence and a piece of each one of us. And so I think that's really important. That was really important to me to say, there's no boss here. There's no employees here. This is literally a piece of each one of us that continues to move forward in the process. And then that's also how we we kind of volunteer up guests or how we say, Hey, this would be like a really good addition to the show until we find a better way for people to kind of come forward and say, Hey, we're interested. And then, you know, we get a chance to do it. Cause there's only so many people that we know we want to, we want to make it open for, you know, every type of unique story that's out there. Cause we don't know everybody. So that's, that's kind of how it was born. How, how would, I would love to hear from everyone else as far as like individually, what is the value that you bring to the show? Start with uh, Lacey. Ah, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. The, I think some of it is like I have a pretty um, realistic personality. I'm very like subdued 
Like, I think that uh, I tend to look at things logically a lot mm -hmm. more than, you know, um, emotionally, anything like that. And I think, you know, I, with my, my own personal interactions on LinkedIn and my story, my backstory and stuff has come from a perspective of being very honest and very open and very like, um, you know, there's a lot of times I'll say something and everybody's like, damn, <laughs> like that was, that was really, <laughs> that, that was a little like hard. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you're right. But that's, that's just my personality. And so um, I would say that that's kind of where I come from with the show and helping people is kind of like bringing some of the honesty hmm. back to society, hopefully. Hmm. Very nice. Chantal? I feel like I'm in charge now. Sorry. All right. All right. <laughs> it's all right. No pressure. Um, I'm like on the opposite end of the spectrum as, as Lacey because I'm I, the dreamer. I knew I'm that yeah. whimsical, like unicorns and glitter <laughs> person. Magic. But yeah. it's all creativity. It's that like that spark. You know, I always want to see the positive in life I always want to bring that to people and bring that light and shine that light because with um I think we've all here faced adversity I think we were all in the let's get honest campaign where we kind of got a little vulnerable with each other and that's how we really connected and I was able to share my um challenge with um my uh, chronic illnesses that I have multiple sclerosis and epilepsy that I was able to, you know, overcome limitations and power through that. So I have this like ultra empathetic bone in my body now since yeah. going through that. So I'm, I'm almost too vulnerable and too empathetic. So I, I don't know. It's, it's hard. We all level each other out. <laughs> it's, it's really cool because I need them. Like I need them to ground me. That's, that's for sure. Yeah. You can't really have one without the other, you know, you need both of them. Yeah. All right, Katie, what you got for me? So I'm like a hybrid of Chantel and Lacey. She's <laughs> um. <laughs> the brainchild. <laughs> Um, but really though, now that I'm thinking about it in this moment, um, I really kind of am because like, I've been kind of through the depths, like, you know, like I was, uh, problems with alcohol and drugs, almost went to prison. I was suicidal all by the age of 19 and, you know, cut that shit out real quick. And not that it was real quick, but it was a process and I just learned so much. And now that it's like, I'm kind of not, I'm, you know, far removed from that. And so... I'm just kind of at a point where like, I don't take life seriously at all. Like I know it's all just play. Um, but then at the end of the day, like I'm trying to do all these things and help all these people. Cause I think that's really like what it's all, you know, it's just about like relationships and just trying to build something and do something and create and learn, evolve and grow. And like, you know, that's why we're so aligned on, on everything. Um, so yeah, I kind of bring that, if that makes sense. And the tattoos. Yeah. And I'm tatted. That, that game. Yeah. Does anybody, does anybody else have tattoos on this online show? Okay. So, okay. You got a USMC tattoo? Uh, USMC. Yeah. On the arm. And then I got the dragon. Yeah. I, I knew it. Don't I knew ever it. see that one. So, um, so I, I got uh, another one here. I don't know. Do we have more time for one more? Go for it. You're good. Okay. Um, what's the biggest challenge of this show and, and working with other personalities and, and content production, like where do you see that that becomes a huge challenge for each one of you individually? Let me let let me let um, Chantel and Katie and Lacey go first, and then I'll wrap it up if that's okay. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest challenges is like, you know, we all have to give of our time, and it has to align. <laughs> um, and we have to like line up, and then it's not just our time that we have to think about. It's like the person that we're bringing on's time or person that we're bringing on um I think that's honestly the biggest challenge because we kind of mesh so well that actually you know what maybe that is a challenge that we mesh so well that it's hard for it like we don't speak up because we're just like wow that's a great idea and then at the end of it we're like wow that was really dumb why did we do that and it's like well I didn't want to say anything because everybody else thought it was a yeah. good idea Love so it. 
so time and the fact that we do just we just jive and so it's like it's hard for us to like find that friction to like I think grow we eventually find it but yeah I'm gonna piggyback on Katie's Katie's response about how we we're so we just we just I don't know we, we all vibe together it's um and that's great but at the same time I think the biggest challenge there is the time you know you only have so much time to deliver and dig deep and um get as much out of a conversation as possible with you know I could talk to each one of these people for years and still talk about different things you know dig into the universe dig into anything so I think time is probably the biggest obstacle when everything is so, it just works so well together. We just want it to continue forever. Yeah, I think it's really, it's really interesting that Katie said that because <clears throat> I think that's, it's so true. The, um, the not being able to gain enough friction to grow, like that's brilliant because I think we do do that a lot. We, we spin around each other like, no, you're brilliant. No, you're great. No, we so many great ideas, but um I do think that Chantel is right too like one of my biggest hurdles with it sometimes is maybe not knowing the guest enough when we bring them on to ask the question that's going to get to the heart of the issue like because some people take you know they really need to hear the question phrased a certain way to be able to you know bring that out of them because they're, they're, you know I think one of the points of the show is really helping people also like find their voice too and like share their story and so to to get to the heart of somebody's story is really hard um in this amount of time if you don't know what to ask to get them to say what you know is there so yeah that's a great point yeah so agreed with all of them actually so it's really interesting that you know our personalities and our relationships um I think the time commitment is the biggest one, of course, because yes. each, and, it, and I, I say it because, you know, the way that we've structured this project, and I think Lacey and maybe even Chantel might've said this in the past, they're like, wow, if this was like our daytime job, this would be great. Like if there was something, and, and, and I think Matt Gagnon, actually one of our guests, yeah. brought the question up, he's like, well, why can't it be? And like every single one of us was like, uh, well, and that was it. And so, so, you know, if it was, if it was something that maybe gave us, uh, cause I think you talked about having a company that could be on autopilot where you would be financially stable. Right. So I think the financial stability piece would be huge if that's what we chose to do with this. I think the challenge for, you know, for all of us and even myself is what's that next step? What's that next level of growth for us? And I, until Katie said it, like the friction piece, totally makes sense. I mean, it's just our pers our personas, most of us aren't wired that way. So we're more enablement and supportive and productive, but sometimes we have to have kind of that, okay, what's the gut check, right? Yeah. So, so that's, I mean, I jotted a couple of notes here, but, um, and then Lacey's get to the heart of the story. That's always going to be a challenge of, you know, the prep for the guest to make sure the guest is getting as much as we're getting out of it as well. But yeah, I feel that we give the community this exposure to people that they may not have ever heard certain stories of. Mm -hmm. And so every single guest that we've had, we feel the exact same way as they shared something in there. I think, I think of the episodes we did, I think 90% of them said, I don't think I've ever shared this with somebody else. So I think our dynamic helps to bring that story out from the person rather than just kind of scripting it out. Um, so yeah, time, friction, I think getting to the heart of the story. And we want to continue to do things. So yeah. there's a ton of other shows probably before us. There's tons afterwards. But you know, the fact that we're having other people enabled to do this kind of stuff, I think that's like the greatest compliment we can receive. It's just nobody else is doing it just like we are, which is awesome. And I could totally relate. We didn't really talk about One Minute Weekly, but the Please. show that I do is just like – it's a total game changer for me. And I'm, I'm right there with you as far as, you know, what's the next step for me with that? Because yeah. what's been interesting is I've actually, you know, I've been offered speaking gigs. I've gotten clients from it. I've gotten people reaching out to me, telling me I'm inspiring them, but there's always like that, 
how do I make this more efficient? How do I make this easier? Because I, I do my all, all my own LinkedIn research and reach out to different people in different countries that speak different languages. Right. And I'm just like, hey, you want to meet? Like, you know, I have like a form and things that I send them. Uh, and I, then I go meet them and we film and then I go edit and add subtitles. And, you know, it, it can get very strenuous. I totally understand the, uh, the time commitment. So you have to see the value out of it. There's always like that, you know, how do I level up, right? How do I not take myself as an amateur anymore? And how do I actually take myself professionally and seriously? Because what I'm creating is something that's worth being put out. And I think that's huge because artistic creation and, and business have just stereotypically been so far apart. And now it's really, really merged, you know, your creation and your marketing and, and the way that you do business and network, it's all, all one. Yeah, agreed. I'd, I'd love to chat with you at some point about that because if there's anything I can do to help out, and I'm sure any, any of the co-hosts here would offer the same thing, but I'd love to bounce some ideas around to hear what you have been doing and maybe some things that we're doing and maybe we can sure. cross apply into our various shows. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so one last thing I'd want to do. Um, so if I ever fail at everything else, um, I would love to be a, uh, an MC for like summer movies. You know, the guy who's like, this summer, one man. So I would love to do an intro for Unlearn for you um, in case you'd like me to. You know, you can use it or not use it. Um, but what? Yes. Give me like a short script. Like, uh, like welcome to the Unlearn show. Or blah, blah, blah. Like, what should I say? Oh, my What's God. What's the thing you normally say, Sonny? It's like, yeah. where we're breaking yes. bad habits, blah, blah, blah. Breaking yeah. Bad things, yeah. <laughs> With a, a plan and a purpose or whatever it is. Welcome welcome to the Unlearned Show, where we talk about breaking bad habits with a purpose. That's it. Just that short and sweet, and you can add whatever else you think you want to. Right, let me type this one. <laughs> and Sonny doesn't have to say it every day. Yeah, that way you can take something off my plate. Thanks. <laughs> We should just use Jordans all the time, like <laughs> Batman lead in. Okay. Uh, well, we're not going to have Jake, but uh, okay. Um, okay, cool. All right, I'm going to give it a shot. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the Unlearned Show with Sonny, Lacey, Chantel, and Katie. Missing is Jake. Breaking bad habits with a purpose. Today's guest, Jordan Carroll. There you go. <laughs> It would have been awesome if the birds started singing at the same time. Right. Maybe I'd go a little again. A little off theme, but it's like this magical background, like fairy. One man, one destiny. <laughs> In a world. Oh. Yeah, that can keep going. I'll stop. Jordan, thank you, thank you, thank you, man. It was so awesome seeing where you're at and hearing your story. Really appreciate your time this afternoon, man. Thank you. All right, friends. Thanks so much for having me on. It's been a true honor. Thanks, Jordan. Later, mate. Later,